Hey, Thor. John. I'm good. So let's see. Let me double check. We've got recording going. And that my power is doing what it needs to. All right. Plugged in. All right, guys. Welcome to Lunch and Learn. I'm Cedar, and that's Thor. We try to meet every single week and spend about a, <clears throat> excuse me, about a half an hour going through charts and, and just looking at things from a TA perspective, different, different from our intraday concepts that we typically are all trading. So a little bit more education piece. Um, these are recorded and I post them inside the thread that I have for the lunch and learn. And then they're also on my YouTube channel if you want to go back and watch them. So looks like I've got all my text set up. So heading over to the lunch and learn thread. I'd like to see chart of yeah, chart golf, golf scores. scores recently. <laughs> That's They're awesome. They're all right around 83, 84. <laughs> <shot. laughs> <laughs> all right. Looks like Tesla is the first request. I'll let you start with that one. All right. Let me open it up. We don't look at these until we open up um, Lunch and Learn. I don't like looking at I don't like to look at charts, you know, if I'm going to uh, get a kind of a first look at it. I like to open them fresh, even though Tesla, I probably look at every day, but um, uh, most of these, the only one that I see here that I haven't looked at, I'm just kind of looking at the list. Uh, LCID, I haven't looked at for a while. Meta, I haven't looked at for a while. Walmart, CRWD, PLTR, and BA, I have looked at. So. Some of these I'm not going to have a really fresh uh, look with my eyes, but I still haven't really looked at them for a while. Tesla, I look at quite often, so I'll, obviously we're going to start with that one. Yeah, for me, this is a short. I mean, I, I, I don't like it right now. I've been calling it short. I was, I was calling it short um, prior. Um, I think somewhere around 205, I was saying it needs to hold or it's gone. Um, and then I think I said somewhere around uh, 197, 198, 195, um, it needed a hold or it was going to fall, and it did again. And I th I did not think it was going to recover from that. It's trying to now. Uh, my thinking, looking at the chart, that it's probably it's, it's going to fold once it gets up near 196. Um, well, it's, it's kind of close there now, isn't it? Well, not really. What did it get to today? Oh, it did. It got to 196 today. Um, I think it's a short right around one, uh, 196, 197, 198. I don't think it uh, recovers yet. I think it's in trouble for a while. All right. I'm posting my Tesla weekly chart. So our, I've got a monthly level at 195.63 that I was talking with Moonshot about. That's probably what we're going to see as be the serious level for the day. And that's definitely right as we opened and popped over that briefly at the 196 and rejected. <laughs> so below that, a uh, support on the weekly. And these, my support and resistance are based off uh, visible range volume profile, the VRVP is how I draw my support and resistance. And then on the higher time frames, I'll also use the candles if they're close. Um, 180.36 is what has to hold on the weekly for me, or I'll join the short club on Tesla. You're not, you don't think short <clears throat> right now, Cedar? I can't, nope. You still like it? Yep. It, I, well, I'm, you know, yeah, and I mean, that's that's, a... it's a ten dollars short, right? So if if you were going to trade it short, and the way that the Tesla premiums move, a ten dollars short on Tesla, I haven't looked at them in the last like week, but chances are they're already priced in, so they're probably already juiced. So I couldn't I couldn't initiate short here now. Yeah, I mean, I I, I you're right. I, I was going to comment further okay. on what I said. I mean, it's been in a downtrend for two years now, I think, hasn't it? Let me go back out. Oh, yeah. Something. It's like a two-year downtrend. Uh, yeah, back to, well. Yeah, 
it's 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 in a two year downtrend and it's it's caught the top of those uh, that trend line many times. <clears throat> and when it got weak here again, I mean, I've been I I I like Tesla as a company. I just don't think I don't think it's going to recover for a while still. Now, uh, what Cedar just said, I don't know if shorting it on options is a good idea. You can probably short it on on shares, but it's an expensive uh, right short. You know, when you're going to do shares, mm -hmm. options are always the better. Um, if they're so, not if they're not juiced already and that's usually what happens with tesla is they're already they're they've already taken their move when we're when we've seen this kind of a breakdown from the symmetrical triangle <laughs> yeah i certainly wouldn't go long on it though absolutely not um it, it has a lot of making making up to do but it could you know at some point if it gets up past that you know 197 196 area that I was just talking about, 195, it could maybe run up to, you know, 205 or something. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't play it long term at all. All right. I've got my charts yes. in there for Tesla. So you can see all those levels. I've got Boeing now on screen. And I'm going to draw a bottom trend line. So anchoring the first spot on the weekly, Monday, September 26, 2022. Second attachment is Monday, October 23rd, 2023. It is a parallel channel in an uptrend that we are coming near the bottom of. Um, bottom bounce there would be 194.30, which we have failed to meet so far. Um, looks like we're holding, I'm gonna turn off the volume profile because I don't use that as I zoom in. <laughs> I just do that to set the higher time frame support and resistance levels. So Tesla has been in a box that it's broken out of and now moved back into that basically started at the beginning of 23 range is 218 to 193. So right now we just got back in that box in that consolidation zone or the balance area. And so looking to see what that interaction is towards the low end of that range, 193 to 195 is, is my area of interest. Because of that high time frame bottom support, let me let me post this so you guys can see it. And you know what? I'm not streaming inside Discord. I'm just recording it. So let me fix that first. There's my first problem. <clears throat> Okay, so I've got two streams running right now. I've got the Cedar live stream, which has my ES chart there. And I also have my personal that I'm talking on voice now is streaming. It'll look different when you look at the two of them. It's going to show it's my white candle chart. So just white candles so you can differentiate. <clears throat> okay, there, there's people joining now. And you can be in both of them. There's only a maximum of 50 per stream allowed. So I'll leave this one open while I'm recording. So really this copy it one more time just in case consolidation range is is what I'm watching and because there's confluence right at the 200 moving average on the weekly around 195 I would be looking for a pretty pretty hardcore bounce there I'm drawing a couple of things here and then I'm gonna I'll start in what I was okay, and I just posted my say. weekly chart in the Lunch and Learn channel. I always try to reply back whoever posted the ticker. I try to reply to them because it tags them, but the charts are there for everyone. And then this recap video will also be posted there just in case, because, you know, it's hard to schedule for everybody. And that way, just as a little ability to rewatch and review. I just put something kind of simple together for Boeing. I, to me, it still looks weak. And it looks like there was a huge fake out the other day. Man, I would have jumped all over that. You see that wick, wick rejection just the other day? I'm sitting right on, on the weekly the, right now on it. So hold on, let me, I'm going to post a different, a little bit of the daily zoomed see what out. Talking about. <laughs> right at, um, right around 200, which was a pretty good support spot. Uh, we had that wick rejection. And then, man, I would have jumped all over that and I would have been wrong. Uh, oh yeah, no, I saw the yeah. Because now it's back underneath that actual place that I would have, uh, I would have thought it would hold. Um, but to me, if it if it doesn't hold here, 
it closes under 200, I think it runs back. I think it runs down to you know another five dollars, 195, even even maybe down to 193. So uh, Boeing trades trades matter. around the 200 day moving average, which is the white line or the white moving average on my chart. And that's right where we rejected. So it's sitting 214 and some change. It is a trader stock. You don't trade Boeing long underneath the 200 is my is my best suggestion. Yeah, I didn't draw any trend lines on it. I, it's just to me, it's the chart looks cool. I mean, yeah. it looks like you can trade it. Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't interest me. That's why BCF calls it my favorite chart, my, my favorite stock, because it really isn't. It's a trader's like trader's dream, but it's a it's a mess as a company. I'm gonna post yeah. it daily too, kind of zooming in on that range. <clears throat> I'm looking at that, you know, that long trend line because I remember we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, just before they had that um, the bad news, you know, that really started setting yeah. it down. It already broke the trend line. In fact, I think we all we talked about it and said that. You know, it was looking, it wasn't looking very good. It's kind of weird how that worked out because it was breaking that long uptrend, um, you know, a few weeks back. And then all of a sudden that bad news came out and really tanked it, waterfalled it all the way down to where it is now. And um, Boeing does trade off news pretty heavily. So I tried a reversal trade on that and it failed, but I've traded Boeing enough that, that about eight times out of 10, <clears throat> I cannot get my throat cleared, I'm so sorry. About eight times out of ten, that trade works. So for me, that's a setup that has been very, very profitable, and it's just not going to be every time on anything you trade. Yeah, Boeing's a weird company. Well, not a weird company. It's just that when it's bad news, it's really bad news because yeah, you know, it's always bad, bad news, news for Boeing. Honestly, is it, isn't it always bad news? With that company? Go ahead. Isn't isn't it always bad news on Boeing? I I think since I've been watching it for years yeah it's just that it's when it when there's news on it it's catastrophic type, yeah. type news because if a bad part happens a plane can go down that's why that's why it really tanks when there's something uh something bad happens and then obviously when one plane fails they 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 ground 100 up right so it really it really kills uh news kills that stock what's the next one we got next one is lucid I'll have you take that one. Uh, I've seen some flow coming in on this one. Has, haven't we got a lot of flow on it? I think there has been. We've just had Tesla earnings, right? And that always tends to attract the EV crowd. I'm trying to draw a trend line, right. and I'm just not in love with it. Okay. <laughs> with, like the trend, it with the trend yeah. line in general. Sorry. Go ahead. I don't like it at all. I wouldn't even like for me once it's once something's taken off, I'm only looking to maybe try to find a bounce on it. And um that where where that would be would probably be hmm. Yeah, I don't like it. Although you Oh, it's only four dollars. I haven't looked at this chart in a long time. Wow. Okay. Sorry, the volume point of control is four dollars. We're at three sixty-eight. Damn. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm just looking at it. I just don't like it at all. I mean, if you caught it off that, I don't even know how you could have caught it off that bottom. But maybe thinking that, you know, the second time it hit down near two sixty-five. It's just short. Know. Yeah, just shorts covering. I don't think you could have caught that off the bottom unless you were just purely speculative. That would be. Yeah, unless you were an LCI, LCID believer and you really wanted to try and find it somewhere and thought you saw a, a, a double bounce and you got lucky on it, made a buck. I, I don't know. I, to me, I don't. I wouldn't. I'm not going to trade it now. I'd probably if it came back down and hit that 265 again, I'd jump on it. So I dropped a line from a volume perspective at 2.66. I, if it got back down there, I couldn't touch it with somebody else's 10 foot stick. That would scare me. Like you expect the bounce the first time as it's kind of down there where it dead cat bounced, picked back up. I don't know that it would hold the next time. I don't know. 
and I'm not familiar with what the company is doing currently. So it could be, I mean, it's low, but it could also be a $1 stock just because it's already sold down. So I'm, I'm going to um, post my daily with the downtrend channel that it's sitting in. I would expect if we do continue to see upside here, a rejection around the 433 level. So there's an intersection there in the downtrend channel. Downward trending 200 moving average, the 50 moving average on the daily is just above us at 3.95. So we definitely caught the 10 daily moving average, which is straight turtle traders trade, right? So if you've read that book or familiar with the turtle traders concept, you go long when it closes on the 10 daily and you close it when it hits the 50, which would have been 322. And then the 50 daily moving average is 3.93. Aside from that, this is that does I don't have any real interest in this. I would have to see a break with confirmation over the downtrend channel in the picture I'm going to post. And so daily is a daily close over, and the next one is a continuation day, meaning a green bar on the whole day close that doesn't then open red the next day. Yeah, I just want to add to that. I mean, if you look at this chart, open up weekly. And it just keeps making new lows. I mean, maybe it's bouncing here. But man, you got to see some some recovery of some sort, like uh, higher higher highs and lower lows. And it hasn't really done that. It just keeps keeps going down. So that's kind of a problem. Stock, you got to have a better confirmation. Unless you're just trying to you're trying to, as a believer in the stock catch a bottom on it, maybe. But um, trying to trade it, I just don't see it. It's just well, if, yeah, if you want to add it to your long-term portfolio and you're okay with the fact that we could come back into the 266 level, which is, you know, reasonable, a reasonable little dip where we are at 3.69 and you're not going to look at it again for the next three years, you won't care if you bought it at two or three if it's at 15. But if you're somebody who has to open your chart and look at it and, you know, that's, that's the difference between a long-term investment and if you believe in the company anywhere underneath $4 is probably not a bad thing, but that's presuming you believe in the company. I would not initiate anything here, long-term or even long swing. Yeah, by the way, the key, the key word that Cedar said there was a believer in the company. You know, the EV market is just like it was in the early 1900s when, you know, Chevy and right. Ford and all those, there was, there was so many different automotive companies, it was crazy. You don't know that because all of us weren't even born then. Um, but a lot of those companies went belly up. A lot of these EV companies are going to are going to go belly up as well. So who who's going to be left standing? It well, might not be the ones you think. We talked about this. So, was it last week or the week before? Where if you are, you know, have particular companies that you like in a segment, like trying to find the next Tesla. And I've watched people do this over the last four years, very painfully. Like this is the next Tesla. You don't know. So the idea is to do a little research, make sure you understand the, the company itself, if you're thinking it might be just not because it's a name. And then you put a basket together of them of like half a percent each that together, all together makes a maximum of 5% of your portfolio maximum. And nine out of 10 of them, well, let's go eight out of 10 of them are gonna be delisted. They're going to not even be a pink sheet. They'll be a gray sheet. Like not, they will not be trading. So we have lost that money. And one will probably be moderately profitable. And one will be a home run most likely 10 years from now. So you just put it in there, put a lock on it and don't look at it again. And whatever happens, happens. That's the best way when you're talking about, you know, am I catching the next? And I did that with, with bio names um, back in 2019 when my husband was like, we really should be and this was early 2019, you know, really should be looking at bio were underrepresented because I don't like bio companies at all. So I did it. And Invax was my massive rent winner out of that. And the rest of them eh, didn't really do anything. None of them went to zero, but <laughs> Invax did amazing things, entering it at like $4 into, of course, we didn't know the pandemic was coming, that kind of thing. So you don't know what's coming with EVs but make sure you're not oversizing because just because it could be the next Tesla 
doesn't give it a very high probability because Tesla's been around for a long time and they had 10 years of absolute failure as far as profitability, horrible stock movement. So if you're willing to sit on it, tiny positions. <clears throat> All right. uh, you know, the next one we can do here is is probably PLTR because uh, we, we don't have uh, any of our regulars asking, but Moonshot's asking for BEA, which we did. Uh, PLTR we can probably do. And I have some old lines on PLTR, so I'm going to throw my VRVP. I was, a PL, I was a PLTR believer <clears throat> until I saw... How many outstanding shares they had? It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's hard to yeah. stock with that many outstanding <laughs> shares. All right. Well, we put in a little volume right where we're sitting right now. So let me drop that line in on the. I guess that's on monthly. Look at that. Weekly. I was looking at the weekly. Go, man. I looked at this the other day, and it's looking different right now. Now I. I see it. So that number I just put in was um, 1653 on the monthly, heading over to weekly. It doesn't look like any volume has really changed other than that one. So I'm going to turn off my visible range volume. So it tends to confuse me. I set it in the high areas, but as you're moving your charts around, it'll keep re-rendering and could throw you off potentially. If I'm curious about near-term trading, I'll turn on something called the PVP, which is a periodic volume profile. You can change it from monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, minute, by the bar, whatever. I use them on monthly and on weekly so that it shows me <coughs> where the volume, where volume point of control is in the near time range. So, this month's volume point of control is at 16.39. Last month's volume point of control was at 17.57. The month's prior was at 19.96. So we are in a downtrend right now that I don't see a lot of strength as a potential move out of there. So I'm gonna drop one trend line down from 21.85. Second anchor point is at 18.19. Nope, 18.39. I would have to see I'd have to see a weekly candle close above that, that the next week candle opens with some pretty good promise and not just immediate selling. I'm, I'm not really a fan. We're still in decision here. Is it gonna continue to sell off? There's not really a way to tell. I'll drop the other so you can see the, it's almost a symmetrical triangle. It's really close, <laughs> which just means indecision, but we are currently in a downtrend. Um, I've actually looked at this a little bit the last, um, last couple of weeks because, you know, it's come up quite often in our chat. It's when, for some reason, I, I, I watch it, even though I don't want to get into it because, um, you know, different things, but uh, a friend of mine uh, really likes it a lot too. And he keeps asking me what it's going to do. And I've come to the conclusion for me anyways, is if it gets above 1720 and holds, it's got it's got a possibility to move up, um, but it's got to do that first. It's really got to get above set. It actually went above seventeen twenty today, and fell back. Um, in fact, it's at what seventeen? It's at sixteen seventy three. It got to uh, seventeen twenty four. So you know, like I said, seventeen twenty. I've been calling it seventeen twenty four more than a couple weeks. And it went above and fell back. So maybe not. What am I looking at here? Oh, no. Originally, I called this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Give me a minute on this because I'm going back with my notes here. I originally said if it goes, if it gets below 17, it's going to, it's a short. And I was right because I did call a short on this a while back. And it got down to, I think, like 1550 or something. And then it came back up. And I was waiting for it to hold above 1720. And it did, but it had that candle reject. Uh, it, it gapped up on the 22nd and had that candle reject. That candle reject tells a lot because it means 
Well, exactly what it means, it rejected. And it fell back and closed at uh, 1760, but was still above that uh, 1720 mark. Well, the next day it got, uh, it closed, you know, started f uh, folding because of that candle reject, you know, gave the clue there. And it closed at 1733, and then the next day it started falling. So my my thinking is it, it has to get above 1720 and hold to have a chance. If it does, you can watch it there. Watch for volume, watch for price action, and it's possible you can get a run on it from there. Kind of rambled on a little bit. Yeah, this is a, I, was, I, do, I do not love this chart. Not, nope. I, well, I was I was talking out loud while yeah. looking at it. So exactly, I and that's what we, we try to do is, is verbalize what we're seeing, because most of the time we would not be spending this much time on any chart. You either like it or you don't, but we're trying to walk through the internal dialogue that processes in 1.5 seconds after you've looked at charts for thousands and thousands and probably multiple tens of thousands of hours where you can just go yes yeah. or no, but to show what we're, yeah. yeah. For the new people that are kind of listening to our thing today, um, I glance at charts. I don't have any kind of uh, technicals on it. The only thing you'll see on a chart that I'm looking at before I do anything to it is just basically volume and the candles. That's it. I have nothing else. I don't use moving averages. I don't use MACD. I don't use any of that stuff. I just look at a bear chart and decide if I like it. And then I'll throw down uh, support lines and trend lines. And then I'll start throwing up my cursor around on different spots on prices to see if I like anything. And then I'll decide if I like it, whether I want to call it out. Um, but I don't, I don't, when I look at a, a chart, it's pretty bare. Yep. And my volume is volume at the bottom of the screen. And then the volume profiles, which are on the side, they look like a sideways mountain, which is how I draw my support and resistance. And I use a few basic moving averages just because everyone else does. And if everyone else is going to do it, there could be some actionable things around there, but it is, it is all volume based. That's volume is king. Yep. King daddy. That's what I always call it. Volume is king daddy. Well, we've got and time for one more ticker. If anybody wants to throw it in there. Volume is the fuel. Mm -hmm. It's what uh, creates all the other indicators. I have about three more minutes. So let's go and, and run through this one really quick. CRWD. All right, have at it. I got to flip over to that channel again. The first thing I look, as soon as I look at it, I don't like it. Um, I don't like it because uh, it, there's really nothing to, it's hard to decide what it's going to do other than it looks like it's, um, it's either going to fall back or it's going to consolidate here for a while. And I think that's what you got to wait for, is wait for the consolidation because if it, um, I think that if it doesn't hold above 290, it's probably going to head back down to 260. Um, if it call, consolidates, it's going to consolidate between, um, you know, 290 and um, 300, 305. So you just got to watch it in there for a while and see what it's going to do. But it had such a run up and it went from uh, in September 145 to 300 now, it doubled in price in September. So it's probably, it probably has to consolidate for a while. Um, and that's what I'd wait for. But straight up, I don't like it. I would look at this chart. It's just not an all. entry point here. I mean, this is, it's, this is a missed if you weren't already in it. Now, if you are in it, you're looking for this to hold the previous highs from November 8th, 2021, which is kind of right where we are right now, right? Uh, 299.04. This is a very obvious profit taking that doesn't initial, that doesn't right away make it a short. If it is short below 295, you have room to 281 and it's pretty easy room from a volume perspective. I'll post this weekly chart. But if you're in this and it's not in your long term portfolio, set it and forget it 10 years from now, you'll look again. Now is probably the time you take your profits. Just just putting that out there. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I, as soon as I looked at it, I didn't like it, but, you know, I can see why somebody would look at it and don't want to miss it. You know, that's why I mentioned the consolidation. Um, man, you look at the weekly, you can see that 
that big head and shoulders that it made back in 2021 through uh, 2020, halfway through 2022. Yeah, it's interesting, but it's for me. It's you know you're chasing it now. I think you got to wait and see what it's give yourself some more clues on it before you decide what to do. And with that. That's all I got today. I, I only had like 30 minutes and I have to stick with it today. Um, but I wanna say, uh, everybody, please don't forget to fill out our monthly. Um, it's how um, the people here that work so hard uh, make their money. It's how they get moved up and down. And It's how and we hire people. It's, it's the only place we hire people. And the senior staff, so Thor and I, D. Cruz and Husky are not on it at all because as the lead for the team, we're always in the top because we're visible and interacting and trading all the time. So we removed ourselves entirely. We want to see who on staff is helping you the most. We want to see who is not on staff is helping you because that feedback is huge and how they get their roles, how they get their, their um, advancement within the company. Yeah, keep in mind, I mean, you don't, don't, don't vote on somebody because you like their personality. You know, it really does, because there's some people here that really work hard, and they're really good at what they do, but, you know, we need to know who they are. Right. Uh, I mean, we need to know who you like, who's helping you. Who's helping you. And even the ones like Cedar just said, they're not on that list, write them down, write them in on the, uh, uh, on the sheet. Write-ins are what we're looking for, because those are the people that get moved in and out, right? You know, off the top of my head, I think that's how Ocean got uh, up where he is. And I think, I think, well, a lot of them did. Most of them did, actually. I think so, a couple, I think a couple of the guys um, were in the combine we did last summer. And I think we're talking about doing another combine, which will help right. highlight, you know, some of our people in the community that haven't been as visible. Um, but yeah, it's where most people are promoted is from that survey. So more feedback you can right. give us. Yeah, I know, I know it for you, for a lot of you guys to say, ah, oh, man, I don't, you know, I'll get to it and you don't, or you say, I want to do it, uh, but I just, you know, the market closes and I got to take care of my kids. I got to do this. I got to do that. You know, please just take the, the, the three to five minutes because, um, it's probably it, not it even really that. Does it's probably one to two. How hard, yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't take that long, but it really does dictate how the site, uh, develops going forward. A lot of the stuff that's taken place over the last couple of years has changed because of what we get in those those feedbacks oh, and for sure. including the people that move up in the uh, into our um, our staff and and higher up that's how they get there and it's it's not just staff what you just mentioned suggestions comments about the the service all of that we all read all of them and then we review it in our staff meetings and a lot of the changes like you just said have become come directly from resounding feedback from our members. So we really are there interested in what your experiences are. Yeah, and one more one more thing. Even if even if it's the bad stuff, we want to oh, hear yeah, it. for sure. In fact, we want to hear the bad stuff more than we want to hear the good stuff. Because the bad stuff is what people are thinking but don't say. And that's why we need to know the bad stuff too. If there's something you don't like, if we hear enough comments regarding the bad stuff, we got to know. I mean, that's really, that stuff's more important than the good stuff. And even just not bad stuff, but frustrating things or things that you could see yes. as, you know, could be streamlined. More eyes, more ears, always a good thing. So thanks for hanging out yes. with you guys. I'm going to go ahead and wrap the recording up and we'll see you inside Market Talk.